Welcome to the Telabs Optical Land video using RSTP and MSDP. The purpose of this video is to provide a better understanding of spanning tree protocol and its application at the Telabs OLT to prevent loops and provide a mechanism for redundant interfaces into the system. The topics covered in this video will be a definition of both the RSTP and MSTP applications, the process for provisioning and editing the parameters of these applications, and a description of the parameters that can be set in the EMS. Spanning Tree Protocol was developed initially as part of the 802.1D standard. The primary goal of the standard was to prevent loops within the network. In Layer 2 networks, since they represent a broadcast domain, it can be a problem if loops occur because traffic, especially broadcast and multicast traffic, will be looped in the network. This often will result in the network bandwidth being consumed by the looped traffic and disrupting the network. The key functions of STP are discovering the topology of the network, looking for loops within the topology, eliminating loops, and opening redundant links in the case of a network failure. Within the topology, it must resolve to a tree and branch structure. One switch or bridge must be elected as the root bridge, which is the root of the tree. The STP protocol will work to ensure that every other bridge only has one path to the root bridge. Spanning tree will select the root bridge based on a bias created in the protocol to select a particular node within the network to be elected as the root bridge. Usually, this will be the core router or the router for the segment of the network. Each switch or bridge that is participating in the spanning tree is given a bridge ID. Bridge ID is an eight byte field that is a combination of the bridge priority and base MAC address of the device. The bridge priority is a priority based on every switch, 32768 by default. If there is a bridge priority tie, then the base MAC address is considered. Spanning tree will attempt to determine the cost of each path from the bridge to the root. Traffic will be sent along the least cost path to the root and any redundant pass will be blocked. Root port is the port that has been determined to be the least cost path back to the root bridge. If there is a tie in path cost, then path to the neighbor that has the lowest bridge ID will be elected as the root. A designated port is a port that is in the forwarding state and is forwarding traffic away from the root bridge. A blocked port is a port that has been determined to be a redundant path to the root bridge and was not selected as the best path to the root bridge by STP. RSTP provides rapid convergence of the spanning tree. It uses a single CIST or common spanning tree. MSTP, which uses RSTP to provide rapid convergence, enables VLANs to be grouped into a spanning tree instance, provides for multiple forwarding paths for data traffic, and enables load balancing. MSTP essentially allows multiple logical spanning tree instances to run over the same set of physical links. Each instance is known as an MSTI, or multiple spanning tree instance, and runs its own RSTP state machine. Rather than blocking all VLAN traffic on a port, the MSTP only blocks traffic at an MSTI. Essentially, it can coexist with STP and the MSTI0 is the standard CIST. If MSTP is not configured, then by default all configured VLANs are in the CIST. The OLT level spanning tree GUI allows configuration of the bridge level settings for the spanning tree. The configuration screen for the OLT can be reached by right clicking on the OLT, then selecting protocol spanning tree. Protocol version determines the protocol to be used. MSTP and RSTP are backwards compatible with STP and so can be used with STP only terminals. Most systems use RSTP due to the improved convergence time. MSTP allows multiple spanning tree domains. The default is MSTP 
And this works well in most network topologies, even if all the other nodes are RSTP. If no MSTIs are configured, as in this example, it would place all the VLANs into the CST or common spanning tree used by RSTP and STP. Bridge priority is used to bias the selection of root bridge by the spanning tree protocol. The default bridge priority of the OLT is 53248, which is lower than most switches default of 32768. Since the OLT is typically attached to either the aggregation or core network, this ensures that the OLT is not selected as the root, which is in most layer two topologies a mistake. If the OLT is essentially the network, this value may need to be lowered to force the OLT to be elected as root. Bridge forward delay is the time that is spent in the listening and learning state of the RSTP protocol machine. Default on most bridges is 15 seconds and can be in a range from four to 30 seconds. This is typically not modified. Bridge hold count defines the maximum number of BPDUs that can be transmitted during every hello time period. Default is six and is not editable. The max age time is zeroed when BPDUs are received. When it expires, it causes a port to update the state of the port to designated and begin going through the listening and learning state to the forwarding state. Default is 20 seconds and should not typically be modified. BPDUs are sent to a minimum every hello time interval. The hello time is set to two seconds and cannot be modified. Max hops is the maximum number of hops that the BPDUs can travel within the layer two network. Default is 20 and typically is not changed. When using MSTP, there is a common spanning tree and the MSTI are multiple spanning tree instances. Each MSTI is a logical spanning tree instance and runs completely independent of the others. VLANs are associated with each MSTI and all VLANs within an MSTP region will all use the same topology. The MSTID uniquely identifies the MSTI within the region. It is an integer from 1 to 4094. MSTI ID of 0 is reserved for the CIST. The MSTI priority is used to set the bridge priority for that MSTI. It serves as an identical function to the bridge priority within the CIST. The range is from 0 to 61,440 in increments of 4,096. The default is 16,384 for the MSTI bridge priority. The STP configuration for uplinks is reached by going to the links view and right clicking on an uplink interface, then protocol spanning tree. In this interface, port priority is used as a tiebreaker for two equal cost paths to the root bridge. The port priority default is 128 and typically should not be modified unless you wish to bias the selection of the path to the root to prefer a specific link. The port path cost defines the cost for traversing the link to the root. The OLT will default the port path cost to agree with the standard conventions for that speed port and should not typically be modified. The most common reason to modify the port path cost is to bias towards a particular link. Due to the standard definition of the port path cost, higher capacity links will be preferred over lower speed links. Port hello time is the time between each BPDU sent on the port. This value is defaulted to two seconds and typically should not be modified. The hello time can be lowered to one second, but this doubles the CPU load for STP processing. Port internal path cost is the port path cost to be used for communicating downstream towards the ONTs. This should not be modified. The point to point MAC box indicates the link to another switch. 
When a port is declared to be an admin edge port, it is assumed to be the network edge and unlikely to be participating in STP. To speed acceptance and transition of the port to forwarding, ports declared as admin edge will go into forwarding state immediately but still process the state machine. If a loop is detected after it is in the forwarding state, the port will be blocked. Admin edge port should only be used for ports that have end devices attached. When auto edge port is enabled, the system attempts to determine whether a port is an edge port and automatically configures the port to be an admin edge if needed. Typically, this works well to properly configure the port but may occasionally be overridden. Enable STP determines whether or not to enable STP and process the RSTP state machine. If restricted TCN is enabled, processing a BPDUs from the uplink interface that attempt to change the spanning tree topology will not be allowed. Typically, this should be disabled as a spanning tree above the OLT is expected to change upon network failure or additions of network equipment. Restricted role restricts the role of this port from becoming the root port or a port that is used to communicate to the root port when this is enabled. The spanning tree information received on the configured port is subjected to role selection. If the received information is superior, the port is selected as the alternate port or backup port. If the received information is inferior, the port is selected as a designated port. If all ports of a switch are set to true, then this will force the switch into a role root bridge. The MSTI ID defines the MSTI configuration for each multiple spanning tree instance. The MSTI ID will be copied from the bridge configuration into the port configuration. As with the CST, each MSTI has a separate port priority. The default port priority is 128 and typically should not be modified unless you are trying to buy a spanning tree to take a specific path. As with the CST, each interface has a path cost, which is used in computing the least cost path to the root. Each MSTI has its own path cost. The VLAN property table is available in the switching application under the VLAN property tab. The VLAN property table includes all attributes associated with the multiple spanning tree protocol. The MSTID associates a VLAN with a particular spanning tree instance. The CST and each MSTI will separately compute the state of the spanning tree, and all VLANs associated with that spanning tree instance will be blocked or forwarded based on the spanning tree state of the MSTI or CIST. This concludes this video. In it, we have discussed a definition of both the RSTP and MSTP applications, the process for provisioning and editing the parameters for these applications, and a description of the parameters that can be set in the EMS. Thank you.